everyone. If I look totally frazzled, it's because I am. I've decided to film a little video about some games because I have had the worst freaking day. I broke my iPhone 8. I lost one of my jobs. My dogs, don't even, don't even ask me about my dogs. So to brighten my mood, I thought what better way to talk about board games? And a few people had said to me, um, can you do a video on the games that you got when you're in America? So that is what this is. I'm going to try and be really, really fast so that you're not super bored. I'll go through them. If you see anything that you want me to cover in more depth, as always, just let me know in the comments and I'll do it. And I'm sorry that I look so completely frazzled. Unbelievable. Start with this one. So Drop Mix. Drop Mix is an electronic card game. This is it here. It's not out in Australia yet, but it will be because I have harmonic, so I'm assuming EB Games will be selling it eventually. And you basically get sets of cards and you play them on here to change the music, trying to steal the mix from the other player. And it's super clever the way that it works. I might cut in some video so that you can see how it works. But um, it basically knows what's on each card. You can put an entire stack of cards on here and it will tell you what's in the in the deck. So that's really cool. If you're looking for something different, probably good for like uh, family game nights as well because it's really easy to play. That's Drop Mix. So frazzled. Next up, Harbour's Tiny Park. I got this for my grandkids. Thought they'd like it. It's a polyomino game, kind of like Baron Park but you are building a little theme park and I just thought it was adorable, so hopefully they'll like that one. Harbour do great kids stuff, so. Did I mention this is the second time I've filmed this because the camera was pointing the wrong way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dice Bazaar and Huppie's Grand Bazaar. I like a good bazaar game. I don't know why. Yeah, I obviously like that kind of trading aspect or whatever. Haven't played either of them, don't know much about them, just basically thought they looked adorable, so I grabbed them. I am so shallow, guys. If I see a cute game box, shallow. What was I saying about a cute game box? Gaia, I saw this one in Barnes & Noble in the US, and it grabbed me straight away. Look at it, it's just gorgeous. I didn't do a lot of research into this one, but it does look like something I will enjoy playing. So bonus, and it was super cheap as well. I think it was $20, something like that anyway. That's Gaia. Fold It is a game that I saw on the One Tars YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to her, uh, do it. Really cool channel. And it's just this odd little game where each player has this sort of thin silken sheet and you have to fold it to match the card and be the first one to do so. So it's super easy uh, in premise, but quite hard to do. So I'll probably stick up videos or something to explain all images so that you can see. But that's a nice little game and it's something that I haven't got in my collection already, so I thought it would fill that little hole. Let's fold it. Ooh, I like a good game that looks like a book. I don't know why, but I did. Wordsy and Tortuga. This one's really nice, got lovely artwork. It's like a little uh, Spanish Caribbean type piratey thing, so that'd be cool. Just like how that looks on the shelf. And Wordsy is a word game, unsurprisingly, and I suck at games. Like, I, I'm the first to admit it. I'm terrible at retaining rules, and I'm terrible at playing them. Other than word games, I'm actually quite good at them. So I'm looking forward to playing this one. I might actually win. Alhambra the Dice Game. I own every Alhambra that there is, every version other than this one, so when I saw it, I'd never seen it before in a game store. I was like, I'm, I'm grabbing that right now. And I think it was super cheap as well. I think it was only $20, so well worth it. Looking forward to checking this one out. Alhambra is a great game, really, really cool. So hopefully the dice version uh, is just as good. So frazzled. Gold Raiders and this belongs in a museum. Can you see anything here? Any similarities? That's why I bought them. Didn't really know that much about them, but the theme is my cup of tea. Anything that uses this font, game, game designers, anything that uses this font, I'm gonna buy it. Me. Yeah, so I like the theme, and um, that's Belloc. What's his name? What's John Reese Davies' name in Raiders? Oh my God, how do I not remember this? Ah, anyway. I like the theme, I love Indiana Jones. 
So yeah, looking forward to checking them out. There you go, Stranger Things. Anything with Stranger Things on it, I'm probably gonna buy it. Because I love it. I've been in episode seven of this season. Let's not discuss that. This is a card game. Looks like a little poster. So cute. Really thin cardstock, I've noticed. It's almost like paper. But um, yeah, I'm assuming it's probably like Uno, that, that kind of gameplay. I'm not sure. But I will be playing that on the weekend at Games Night. Stranger Things. I got this in Target in the US. I don't think it's out here yet, but it probably will because it's Stranger Things. Witches of the Revolution. Bought purely based on the theme. And I liked the uh, actual look of it as well. That kind of sepia artwork. Um, yeah, who doesn't love a good witchy game? I don't think it's historical in context. I think it is just a cooperative uh, deck builder. But we shall see. That's Witches of the Revolution. Did I do Dread? I can't remember whether I filmed it this time or last time. I'll, I'll do it now anyway and edit it. Dread is an RPG that uses Jenga instead of dice. So I'm, I'm thinking that if you have to roll to do something, you try and take a piece out of Jenga and dependent on the outcome, that would dictate what happens. So if it falls over, I'm assuming that would be like a fumble. Um, yeah, just like the premise, pretty weird and a good use for Jenga. That's dread. Did I mention my Porg? I don't think I did. Mm, Porg. Bob Ross. Yes, I'm old enough to remember watching Bob Ross. My partner and I used to love watching it. Super relaxing show. Uh, really chill guy, so no surprise that his game would be Chill with Bob Ross, or Bob Ross The Art of Chill. I have actually played this a few times, and it's pretty good. I mean, it's a target game, so it's a mass marketed game, but don't let that put you off. It's easy, simple, good family game. Collect cards, finish paintings, try and be most chill. Who doesn't love Bob Ross? Look at him, he's adorable. Another target exclusive game, this one's Sonar which is the smaller version of Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar is a game that came out, I think it came out last year, but you need a massive group to play it. You all play crew members on a submarine. And this is the version that's cut it down. So this one's just two to four players, whereas the other one I think went up to eight, maybe 10, eight I think, uh, Captain Sonar. So that's Sonar, I got this in Target and I could not get it because the only place you can get it at the moment is Target in the USA. So I'm looking forward to trying that one, Sonar. By Order of the Queen. It's quite a hefty box. Um, I was actually given this for review when I was in the US. They didn't want to post it to Australia, so I arranged to get it when I was there. Uh, and it looks super cute. It's a nice card game. It's got gorgeous artwork. And it look, does look like something that I'm really going to enjoy. So I'm looking forward to trying this out with my game group. and see what we think. The review of this will probably be on a multitude of channels, including mine and Game of Loser it was given to me for Game Palooza, so we'll see how that goes. It looks good. Train heist. You and your friends can rob a train together. Well, I like Cult Express. I like that kind of theme. I love a good Western. So I grabbed this and also the characters on it are animals. You probably can't see, but I'll embed it here somewhere. Uh, yeah, and I thought that was weird and cute as well. So that's Train Heist. I hadn't seen it before. Apparently it was on Kickstarter a while ago, but I obviously missed it. I think this is the only one I haven't done. And this was on my wants list way at the top. So as soon as I saw it, I had to, I had to nab it. This is Mountains of Madness and it's a Cthulhu Mythos based game. But as far as I'm aware, when you're playing it, you might pick up certain things that tell you to act in a certain way if your sanity starts to fail. So whereas in other games you just might lose sanity but it doesn't actually affect you, I think in this one you might have to do certain things. So maybe if someone says a certain word, you have to react to that by yelling every time or you might have to rock back and forth or whatever, whatever it is. I'm not sure, as I say, I haven't looked into it, but I love HP Lovecraft, I love the Cthulhu Mythos. This was a must buy because it's by Rob Davia as well. That's a designer that I like. So that's Mountains of Madness. And I think this one comes out in Australia in about two weeks. So just one to check out. 
Okay, I'm sorry I look so completely frazzled. It has been the day from hell, but I brought this many games back from a holiday, so let's put things in perspective. Life isn't all bad, is it? Uh, this pretty awesome haul and I'm really looking forward to playing them. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at my haul and if you saw anything here you want me to cover in more detail, just let me know in the comments or on Twitter or wherever and um, I'll be sure and do that to the best of my ability, which isn't great, but we'll give it a go. Back to, back to reality. Ugh, reality sucks so hard today. But board games make everything better. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you next time. Nerfenstein out. Was my dog licking all the way through that video?